Hello friends, welcome to our new series related to signaling in the telecommunication networks. In this series, we will be having a deep look into the signaling and its most famous type of SSM signaling. So let's start. So what are our objectives? Our first objective is to have the concepts of the SS7 signaling, the functional structure in the SS7, the basic format of signaling message unit. Basically, the signaling message unit is the most fundamental unit in the SS7 structure based on which is the complete SS7 architecture. And we will be having a look into the function and principles of those layers as well. So let's start. Let's start with the SS7 system overview. But friends, before we start, we should have a concept that what actually the signaling is. So if we go into the definition of the signaling, a signaling is basically all the control signals used within or between the communication equipment whose functions are to set up the communication level. So if I go into the details of the signaling, the signaling can be between the user and the network and between the network elements as well or even within the network element as well. The signaling between the user and the network is basically called the access level signaling and the signaling between the network elements is falls somewhere broadly in the terms of the trunk signaling. So if we try to classify the signaling according to the working location, as I just said, these are two types of signaling. The subscriber line signaling and the inter-office signaling or the trunk level signaling. Subscriber line signaling is between the subscriber and the communication equipment while the inter-office signaling is between the communication equipment itself. However, if we define the classification of signaling according to the signaling channels, then the first type is the channel associated signaling. Channel associated signaling is composed of the line signal and register signal. The signaling channel is combined with the bearer information refers to the register signal or the two have fixed correspondence. So the basic concept in terms of the channel associated signaling is that that the signaling and the bearer are combined. So that's why in this case this refers to the register signaling. The <clears throat> second type of signaling based on the uh, channel signaling channel is the common channel signaling. The common channel signaling is the signaling of a group of voice channels are transmitted on a, on a common high speed data link in the form of time multiplexing. Common channel signaling basically falls the same path as the voice bearer but in this case the channel can carry the signaling of the several associated voice trunks. So this is basically the concept of the common channel signaling in which the signaling of the several bearers is combined into a single path and it can carry the control signaling of the various speed setup or communication setup. So what are the features of the common channel signaling system? As I said, signaling is transferred through signaling link in the mode of the fixed length or flexible length signaling unit distribution. It transfers only the conventional trunk circuits relevant signaling, but also the message of the various management, maintenance and information query. Signaling network is separated from the communication network, facilitating the maintenance and management of running. As we can see over here, the bearer is established separately 
while their control signals are established separately. That is, the control signal for all these bearers can be combined into this channel and exchange between the end equipments. While in case of the channel associated signaling, this was not the case in which each bearer channel was having its associated signaling with it and there was no possibility to separately exchange the signaling between the two uh, peer entities. <clears throat> new signaling specifications can be added. So in case of common channel signaling, new specifications can be added to cater the development of the information technology and unknown services. So common channel signaling provides us that for any future requirement, it is flexible enough to accommodate and help to have the development into it. It, it uh, required low error rate. It is not uh, so much uh, prone to faults and can recover itself. It requires conduction check of the voice channels. So now we will be focusing purely on the SS7 signaling. <clears throat> In common channel signaling system 7, signal links are independent of voice channels as we have already seen in this diagram <clears throat> in which the bearer channels are being handled separately while the signaling channels are being handled separately. It is multifunctional supporting network can be used in telephone network, circuit switch data network, ISDN network and intelligent network etc. Fundamentally the SS7 signal network is a packet switching data network used for dedicated purposes. So how our SS7 network is basically composed of? Up till now we have seen that what actually are the different signaling types access signaling, trunk signaling or interoffice signaling then we have seen that there are two major signaling types based on the connection between the endpoints that is the subscriber signaling uh, and trunk signaling and the channel associated signaling and common channel signaling. So how a common channel signaling network is basically composed of in terms of the SS7. So the it is composed of basically three elements the signaling point signaling transfer point and the signaling link signaling point is the node generating and receiving the signaling messages on the signaling network it is both the source point and the destination point of the signaling message it basically corresponds to a network element in the signaling network the signaling transfer point is neither a signaling source point nor a destination point and it only functions to forward the messages received from a signaling link to another signal link. So you can say it serves as some sort of uh, aggregation in the network or a forwarding point or an exchange point in the network which itself does not generate any signaling rather helps to transfer the signaling from one point to another or have some sort of aggregation or have some sort of routing in it. <clears throat> to have a better look into it, we can refer to this uh, diagram. As shown in the figure on the below, in a SS7 signaling network, signaling point is represented by a circle, STP is represented by a square, link is represented by a dashed line while the voice path is represented by a solid line. So between two, these two signaling points, the voice path or the bearer path is directly connected between the two bearers while the signaling path is via an STP or you can say it can follow a different path other than the bearer path. So what is a signaling link? It is a physical link that connects respective SPs and STPs and transfers signaling messages. 
so the signal link basically carries the control signal as we have learned earlier in our uh, discussion that signaling is basically the control setup messages while the direct the bearer path is basically the payload or the content so in order to establish this payload or content the control signaling is being passed through the stp in this case and uh, when it passes through the stp then the links that it use are called the signaling links so what is signaling link set it is the collection of a group of signaling links with the same attributes that is the collection of the links between the local sp and an adjacent sp so in this case as we see that there is one link between the sp and the stp so if there are multiple links or multiple control signaling paths between the sp and the stp then they can be grouped into a link set that is the collection of group of signaling links so <clears throat> what is the working mode of ss7 signaling network working mode refers to the relationship between the signaling link and the voice channels the link serves that is <clears throat> for a bearer path the associated signaling links can have what kind of communication path to follow between them so presently two modes are in use one is called the associated mode and the other is called the cosy associated mode what is associated mode the associated mode the messages between two adjacent points are conveyed over a link set directly interconnected those signaling points that is the link is parallel to the voice path here you can see this is an associated mode in which the bearer and the control signaling path <coughs> follow the uh, follow the same path and are bit directly connected between the two adjacent entities while what is cosy associated mode in the cosy associated mode the message which is going to arrive at a sp goes through a path which is predetermined and via one or more stps here we can see that the payload is to be exchanged between these two signaling points but the control signaling is passing through another uh, network entity stp however this is a predetermined path but it is not following the same path as the payload path so this kind of interworking is called the cosy associated mode and the earlier that we discussed is called the associated mode in which the signaling the control signals and the bearer part follow the same path and are directly exchanged between the two signaling points so what is signaling link code the signal link between two adjacent signaling points must be given a unified code that is slc the codes should be corresponding to each other in the two sps the signal links to different sps may have the same slc so in this case like between the two sps if we have uh, several signal links between them then they are to be given a specific number which is called the signaling link code 0 1 2 3 normally the links between the two entities are kept in the power of 2 so uh, in this case uh, let's suppose we have two signal links then they can be uh, given the signaling codes of 0 and 1 however if we have another sp over here then that sp between these two entities the signal links codes can also be 0 and 1 because they are in different directions signaling link selection code it is basically used to select the signaling route and link usually formed by the last four digits of the circuit identification code signaling selection in sscp message is generated at random so we will be having a deeper look into it that how a link is selected uh, 
this is basically done with the help of the signaling selection code. Another important point in the SS7 network is the signaling point code. Up till now, we have been referring to these entities as the signaling points. That it can be any node in the network, it can be an MSC, it can be an HLR, it can be uh, SGSN, or it can be a USSD platform or some sort of uh, ring uh, RBT platform as well. So whenever they will be deployed in the network they are going to have a unique signaling point code the unique code in the signaling network to identify every node is called the signaling point code to facilitate management of signaling network what is the purpose of this is to have the facilitate management of the signaling network the international and domestic signaling networks classification the international signaling network use the 14 digit signaling point code while in china it is of 24 digits usually formed by the last four digits of the kick so uh, we have just learned about the signaling point code and signaling point code is basically falls in two types or like we can refer to them as two types they, those are not basically the types but based on their correspondence they are basically called the uh, so source signaling point code or the originating point code and the destination signaling point code or from where the message is being sent so in data setting in any node we can refer to the as per the node setting either it can be in the binary form or it can be in the hex form so now we have reached uh, to our 